welcome to CNS Inspire series of interviews featuring conversations with people who have made commendable contributions over the years for development justice. Each interview of CNS Inspire series explores what went well and not so well in the past 10-20 years and how can we accelerate progress towards not only issue-specific goals and targets but also for integrated development of all. This CNS Inspired episode features a very special guest, Dr. Jim McDormand, who is not only a noted US congressman serving since 1989, but also a very well-known public health figure. He received a special award from Aid Society of India in Mumbai at the 9th National Conference of Aid Society of India and was in conversation with CNS Managing Editor Shiva Shukla. Without any further delay, let's listen to what Dr. Jim McDormand shares with Shiva. At that point in the United States, no one was interested in AIDS because it was considered a gay man's disease. It's a sexual disease, and that's very difficult for people to talk about openly. We have turned this disease, when I started, it was a death sentence. When a woman gets pregnant, she should be tested immediately, and you should know her status. Sex trade is a reality in every country. With the advent of ART, antiretroviral treatment, you have turned it from a death sentence into a chronic disease. The cost to a society of the epidemic is very high, not only in human terms, but in, in economic terms. It is a medical illness. It's not some kind of sin. I'm a physician who got into the United States Congress in 1989. Uh, prior to that, I had been a state legislator, so I'd been down at the state parliamentary level. And then I was with the State Department in Africa, uh, in, in the Congo, uh, in 87, 88. So I saw the epidemic at the very beginning. And I've been involved in trying to deal with it since that point. And there is tremendous resistance in the society ar around the world. It isn't just in India, it's everywhere, to being open about what this disease is. It's a sexual disease, and that's very difficult for people to talk about openly. They go around and they try and hide what they're really talking about. But you have to say, every year there are millions of young Indians who become sexually active. And they don't know anything. They're just uh, driven by their emotions. And the first thing that you have to do in, in any society is going to be to educate your young people about sexual activity and how this disease is transmitted. It's transmitted almost exclusively by sexual activity. There's drug use and a few other things, but the real way is through mostly through sexual activity. And Young people have to know that, and they have to know that they have to practice safe sex, which is meaning using condoms most of the time, unless it's with someone with whom they want to have a baby. And if they want to have a family, then they stop using a condom. But otherwise, you don't know. And the thing that's important for young people to know is that it, sometimes people lie. They say, oh, I've never had sex with anybody. You're the first person. Well, it's a lie. And so if you trust that to prove that you don't have to worry in this instance, you will you will very likely to contract AIDS. So education is the biggest problem. And we tend to think, well, we educated them last year, so what do we have to, there's a whole new group coming. And next year there'll be another whole new group coming. And, and governments don't have a hard time continuing to feel like they have to educate every year. The second one would be uh, at the time of pregnancy. When a woman gets pregnant, she should be tested immediately and you should know her status so that you can treat her and you can treat the baby at the time of the birth of the child so that you don't have the disease transferred at the time of birth. You could have a perfectly fine baby and then because of the way the birth occurs, they, there's no treatment and, and the baby gets it. So mother to child transmission, I think is the first place. 
Now, the third place is the whole question of uh, dealing with the sex trade. And, and sex trade is a reality in every country. It's a reality in India, it's a reality everywhere. It's, nobody's any different. They all say they have a religion that says it's not proper and we have laws it's not proper and so forth, but it goes on. So you have to f confront that directly and begin to deal with testing the uh, prostitutes and the sex workers, whether it's male or female. And you have to say, uh, we're gonna have to teach you how to have you can maybe conduct your trade, but you have to demand a condom in your use with whoever whoever you're seeing. Uh, the customer may not want to use a, custom, a condom. He may have had too much to drink and wants to just go ahead and do whatever. That You have to have the, the sex workers aware of that. Um, the, third, the fourth thing I guess I would say in almost every country, there is uh, an injection drug culture. And you cannot ignore that um, because many of those people are going out and having sex in the sex trade so they can make money to buy their drugs. So although they're injecting drugs, they're also spreading the disease. So you really need to look carefully at, at how you deal with people. And in the United States, for instance, we have tried to use uh, needle exchanges. So you have a clean needle. If you're gonna stick yourself and give yourself some drugs, you ought to do it with a clean needle. Because if I take your needle and stick it in me, then if you have the disease, I transfer the disease to me. So there's, there's so many places that are very much uh, they're not high level. They don't require machinery. They don't require all kinds of, um, you know, instrumentation or whatever. You have to look at the who the person is and figure out what are what are their vulnerabilities, and then teach them how to deal with their vulnerabilities. It's an we have turned this disease. When I started, it was a death sentence. When I was in Africa. Uh, You'd go down every day, I'd go to work, there'd be a funeral procession, one after another, going to the graveyard to put somebody in the ground because they had died. Um, with the advent of ART, antiretroviral treatment, you have turned it from a death sentence into a chronic disease, like, like diabetes. Now, diabetes, there's no stigma attached to that. It's not a good disease. But nobody looks down on you and says, oh, we know how you got this disease. Or it's, it's just a disease and we treat it as a chronic disease. AIDS is now a chronic disease and has to be treated the same way. And, and there's still stigma in the United States. There's stigma in India. There's stigma in every country in the world about somebody with AIDS because they got it through sexual activity. And somehow, in every religion and every culture, there's somehow a feeling that it was wrong what you were doing. So that's how you got it. Well, we just have to get beyond stigma and deal with it. Because if we're gonna ever stop the disease, we're gonna have to stop it by getting people to the point where we can produce children that are, are clean, that are without the disease. And that's going to require people to admit what they're doing and take action to stop or to prevent it from being transmitted. And it's an ongoing process and political processes get tired of things like that. Long problems that politicals want to forget about. And so it, that's why I say it's a political disease. If we don't keep the politicians involved and don't keep the government involved in seeing that they have a continuing problem, they will begin to, it'll begin to come back up again and your hospitals will be full and you'll have all, uh, you, the, the cost to a society of the epidemic is very high, not only in human terms, but in, in economic terms. And so, it, 
if you don't worry about people, I mean, some people don't care about people. Well, all right, let's talk about economics. From an economic standpoint, that's why I, why I got involved with the CII, because they have their workers. And they don't want their workers to get sick, because if the worker gets sick, they die. Go, they've got to train somebody again. So they're constantly spending money training people, training people, training, people. and that that's what is is the essence of a society not only the government not only the people but also the economic sector the, the business community have all got a, all of them have a stake in this and a reason why they should want to make it better you have been in this field as a physician and as a politician for so many years it's almost starting from the start point beginning from the start point do you have uh, if you look back do you have some proud moments to share? Um, when I started, nobody wanted to talk about it. So I organized a, a, a group in the Congress to get people. No one wanted to come out and look in India or anywhere else of what was going on. So I put a big conference on, in a big conference like this one here today uh, in Washington, D.C. and spent a quarter of a million dollars and brought people from all over the world so I brought the problem to Washington D.C. so they could so they couldn't deny it was there, um, and I was proud of doing that. I because it raised the level of of um, awareness. A second thing I did, and I and this is probably the, one of the first things I did in Congress, was to start a program called uh, HAPWA, Housing for People Living with AIDS. The problem for people with AIDS is that when they get uh, on treatment, they have no job, they've lost their job, they have no place to live, their family doesn't want them. They're, so you need some housing for them. So I started a big program in the United States back in 1989, and it's going today, still 28 years later, still going, because the problem isn't going away. You still have people who need housing, who have the disease. And so that's probably, those are things, those are the kind of things I've been able to do. They're small things, but there's other, you know, it's. Big repercussions. <laughs> <laughs> and when was that conference you organized? Where you 1992. 1992. Yeah. At that point in the United States, no one was interested in AIDS because it was considered a gay man's disease. So, they're doing it to themselves. That's not our problem, stop it. And we won't have, they didn't realize that out in the rest of the world, it was men and women and, and not gay people at all. Mostly not gay, mostly regular ordinary folks. So it was, it took a lot of education to get them to see that what was going on in India and Africa and in South America was coming to the United States. It took a few years, but that's what the conference was about. From, from your rich experience, any top three learnings you would like to share with the new entrants in the field? Maybe the politicians also and physicians in, for a check. Well, I think that um, the first thing that, that needs to be said, I think, is that uh, as a politician, there are some things you have to do for the good of the people, even if it doesn't do you any good. Talking about AIDS doesn't make you popular. It, uh, it's not like having a movie star here with me that, from Bollywood. That this would make me look good, but sitting here talking about AIDS doesn't make me popular in, in 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 India or the United States. But it needs to be done, and and politicians, if they're serious about taking care of the people, and and caring about the people who elected them, they need to talk about these kinds of issues. I think that's the hardest thing, is to get politicians to be honest about what's going on. Um, I think the other thing is that um, money spent in, in this issue is not 
um, is, is money well spent. We have a saying in the United States, you either pay me now or you're going to pay me later. Well, it's better to pay in front and pay and, and work with people to keep them from getting the, in the illness and treating them up front than waiting until they're very sick and then having to deal with all the problems that come with it. I, I think that's probably we've wasted more money because we have denied what was going on and waited till it was so big, it was a tsunami. By the time it's a tsunami, what do you do? But if you start educating, like the CIA educates truck drivers, you know, they're, they're traveling up and down the roads of India on big trucks. Everything moves in a truck. Well, they're carrying AIDS in the cab from place to place to place to place. And you have to, you have to talk about that and educate people. And, and that politicians need to be willing to do that. And the physicians. Oh, well, the physicians. <laughs> I've, I've worked both in South Africa and in India with the problem of physicians not wanting AIDS patients in their clinic. Want to send them over to the AIDS clinic. Well, that puts stigma on them. When they have to go to the place that says AIDS, that's somehow is a stamp on their forehead. So it's better to have a doctor treating high blood pressure and pregnancy and diabetes and AIDS all in the same clinic. And getting doctors to do that is not easy. Um, I was involved in creating a program in, in South Africa to do just that. And I see some evidence in this conference that it, people are trying to do that here in India. To get the first line of defense for AIDS should be in the average doctor's office. So it's not easy. Integrated uh, yes. services. Integrate, it's, it is a medical illness. It's not some kind of sin or some crime that you have AIDS. You have a disease and you got it. You didn't know or whatever or were careless or whatever, but you shouldn't be punished for it. A doctor's job is to take care of the patient who comes with the problem. So education of the doctors, of the general physician practitioner is also important. Yes. As, as important as educating the students. Yes, yes, you're right. <laughs> We were listening to Dr. Jim McDormand, a senior U.S. congressman serving since 1989 and equally well known for his public health work. He received a special award from AIDS Society of India in Mumbai at 9th National Conference of AIDS Society of India and was in conversation with CNS Managing Editor Shubha Shukla. This podcast episode is part of CNS Inspired series of interviews featuring conversations with people who have made commendable contribution over the years for development justice. Each interview of CNS Inspired series explores what went well and not so well in the past 10 20 years and how can we accelerate progress towards not only issue specific goals and targets but also for integrated development of all. For more details, be welcome to check out our website www.citizen news.org. Thanks for listening and stay tuned for our next episode of CNS Inspired series. Goodbye.